Well, you know what? For some reason, I've been on a breakfast kick. And so today, I'm gonna share another breakfast recipe with you. Just because, like I said, um, you know what? Breakfast doesn't have to be just for in the mornings, okay? You can eat breakfast any time of day or night. Kyle and I do that. We have breakfast for supper a lot. So um, this is just a meal, and this what I'm gonna fix right here is definitely a meal that you could have any time. Um, what we're gonna do today is, I think, um, I don't know if you've seen my other video I have where I'm using my six inch cast iron skillets, but I'm gonna use those today, cooking for two. These are like the perfect little um, pair. And today, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make individual little breakfast pot pies. They're gonna be delicious. So, now, if you don't have the little six inch skillet, no worries, you can just do it in a regular cast iron. You could put this in a little eight by eight dish. It doesn't have to be in a skillet. But that's what we're gonna do today. So, I'm gonna go ahead and get my burner on. And um, that what's really great about this recipe is that you can customize this to um, be exactly what your little taste buds love, okay? And you can swap it up. What I'm making today, you don't have to make it that way the next time. You can definitely change your ingredients around. Okay, so I'm gonna put just one little dab of olive oil, and then I have here some hot sausage. We love spicy and we love heat. So I'm using the hot, but feel free to use whatever sausage you like. And actually, I tried to get turkey sausage, but um, it was not available in my grocery store. So um, I just went with the pork sausage. Uh, we don't, you'll notice in my cooking and in my videos, we don't really eat very much pork. Um, so a lot of people frown at turkey sausage but really and truly, turkey sausage is good. The trick to making turkey sausage good is you have to season it really, really well. It's very, very bland. So if you just take you some good seasonings like sage and coriander, salt, pepper, and you season that up, some cayenne pepper, um, it's really, really good. You can try that sometime if you're looking for um, a different type of meat, but you could do this with bacon, you know, you can do it with any kind of breakfast meat. And while the sausage is cooking, I'm going to go ahead, I have one uh, potato, and I'm just going to use half of it, and I'm going to go ahead and cut this up, and tell you what trick here if any of you struggle with this my cutting board just is moving around too much on this countertop so I am going to stop that there we go I used to have a little mat that you could put under there and I might still have it but I'm not going to take the time today to look for it okay so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to chop these potatoes up I want to do them kind of small Actually, yeah, I'm gonna do them a little bit smaller because I want them to get good and done. And they're not gonna have a whole lot of time to cook. So we'll just go ahead and cut these up in pretty small, thin slices or chunks, whatever, however you wanna call these. Okay. This is a really great way to save time also when you're cooking is just to multitask. While your meat's cooking here, we have plenty of time to get our veggies chopped up. We didn't have to do it beforehand. We can just do it while the sausage is cooking. Okay, we've got that done. Now, I'm going to cut up this pepper. Um, I've got an orange pepper. You can use green, red, you know, yellow, whatever you want. Um, that's just what I had in the fridge. Although I do not like green peppers, so you usually won't see me doing a green pepper. But I do love the other colors. They're so sweet. So I'm just going to cut these in little strips. And then, kind of the same as the potatoes, I'm going to dice these up. 
Don't have to worry about these being as small because these do not take near as long as the potatoes do to cook. Get these chopped up. And then all this will be ready when the time comes that we have to use it. Okay. some potato, we've got us some pepper. Now we'd like the onion. Give this sausage a little stir. It's coming along nicely and also um, I have my oven preheated to uh, 400 degrees. I don't know if you heard that but it just told me that it's ready. Sausage is coming along nicely. Okay. Again, I know not everyone are onion fans, so if you don't like onions, by all means skip this step. Or you could add green onions or scallions. Um, if you maybe want a little bit of a milder onion flavor, you could go with scallions instead. But I, we both love onion, so this works great for us. Probably, the, probably we'll use this whole half of onion for us. Whoops, okay. All right, so I've got all that chopped up. It's ready. And just going to be waiting for when we need it. Let our sausage finish cooking up. Alright, I think that our sausage is just about ready. Remember, if it's not totally, completely done, that's fine because we are going to bake this for a little while in the oven. So it's going to have time to finish up. So what we're going to do is, we are going to drain... Uh, Put our sausage in a bowl, and I just have a little paper towel, a half of a paper towel down in there, just because I want it to um, drain. Alrighty, I got the sausage out of the skillet. As you can see, it's nice and cooked, and it smells mm, so good. Okay, we're gonna set that aside. Now, I have some butter. I'm going to add this butter to the skillet and I'm going to turn, I had turned my heat off. I'm going to turn my heat back on, on pretty low because this burner gets really hot. All right. Now what we're going to do is we've got that good brown goodness in here from our sausage. Okay, so I've added some butter and now we are going to add in our cut up potatoes. Okay, and we're going to add in our onions because those are going to take longer to cook than those peppers will. So let's get our onions and potatoes going. Okay, I'm going to season these. Whoop, I always, for some reason, have to send one or two of them overboard. It just, is, you know, I can't cook without doing that. season these. I'm going to add some garlic, but I'm not going to add the garlic till we're getting a little bit closer to the end. But I will go ahead and add quite a bit of salt, uh, salt and pepper. Get that stirred up. Now we're going to give this just a little time to cook here in the skillet. Let it get softened up a little bit. Kind of pre-cook it a little bit before we put it in the oven. Because once we put the topping on those pot pies, 
it won't take them long. So we want to make sure everything is pretty much done before we put it in the oven. Okay, let's just let them sit and do their thing for a minute. Alrighty, so now we're going with our, our potatoes have been cooking for probably about five minutes or so. They're looking good. So now what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and add in our peppers, okay? So they have time to um, hit good and softened up. We're gonna add in our pepper. And now is when we're gonna go ahead and add our garlic. So what I'm doing is I'm just using my trusty old garlic press, sticking the garlic right down in that little well. Okay, and I'm gonna put it right into the skillet. Sometimes you have to use your muscles with these. Yeah, okay. So, voila. When you're really fortunate, it'll come out on that, but that's, even if it doesn't, that's still really easy to get out. Love this garlic press. All right, stir this around. Anytime, don't forget, anytime you add garlic to your dish, okay, when you've got the heat going, you want to make sure you spread it around good. Don't just let it sit because your garlic can burn really, really easy. And once that happens, it has just ruined your dish. You can't get away from that burnt garlic taste. So um, be really careful when you add your garlic. Don't walk off and leave it. You got to get it stirring around and let it get cooked good before you let it sit still so that it doesn't burn. This is smelling absolutely delicious. Always want to keep scraping up those good brown bits. I always like to call those like little gold nuggets. They're so good. They're packed full of flavor. Okay, we're going to let that cook up a little bit. We added our peppers, we added our garlic. It's been cooking away for a couple of minutes here. So now we're ready for the next step. The next step is we're gonna make a little gravy for this, or a little, um, so our pot pie is not dry. So what we're gonna do is I've got um, some flour, just all purpose flour in here. And I'm going to sprinkle that all in the skillet. Okay, now it may seem like it's gonna, it's sucking up all the moisture. It's gonna get really dry. That's okay though, because then we're gonna add in some uh, cream. But we want this flour to cook a little bit because if you don't cook that flour, then you can actually kind of taste that raw taste in your gravy. So you always want to stir that around, give that flour a chance to cook so that all you really you don't even taste it it's just great a great thickening agent that's what's going to make it your sauce kind of thicker and uh, creamy so we'll let that cook a minute now very carefully we're going to add in our cream just do it kind of slowly Okay, and that's not gonna have to cook long. We're just gonna kinda let that simmer a little bit. Stir it up. We'll let it cook a couple of minutes, let it thicken up a little, and then we're gonna add our sausage back in here. All right, you can already tell that it's thickening up. We don't want it to get too thick. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my sausage back in. You can tell how much grease that paper towel soaked out. That's, ugh, I don't usually, that's why I don't like to eat this a lot. But it's sure gonna make this delicious. All right, this is looking good. It's thickening it up good. Get all this mixed together. Now, before you put this into your skillets or your pan, however you're gonna cook it, 
you want to give this a little bit of a taste, all right? Make sure it doesn't need any more salt and pepper or garlic or any other seasoning that you might want to add to it. You always want to taste it before you put it in there and before you just let it cook and it, it needed a little extra seasoning added to it. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to get our skillets ready. So I'm just going to take a little bit of butter, okay, just run around in there just a little bit, just, you know, coat it up a little bit. We just don't want it to stick, okay? We're going to take our filling, which I've tasted it, by the way, and it is absolutely fantastic. Okay, I'm going to take it. We're just going to half our filling. Now, you can put crust on the top and the bottom if you would like to, but I'm just going to put crust on the top of ours. And the crust that I'm going to use uh, today is actually going to be crescent rolls. Now, you can use uh, pastry, puff pastry, you can use pie crust, you can use biscuits, um, and you know, change it up. That's what I like to do, not, you know, use the same thing all the time but um, just change it up and oh my goodness. It, it kind of makes it taste a little bit different. You can just change up your fillings, change up your topping and you have a whole, a completely whole new dish. All right, so we've got that. Now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna try to open up this can. Try not to jump if it pops. And what you want to do is with your crescent rolls is you're just going to kind of place them and overlap them till they, you know, cover up. You want to make sure that the top is covered up. So just unroll it a little bit. Take you one out. Okay. And you just, there's not any kind of certain right or wrong way to do this. You just kind of want it to look rustic. So just start placing that crust, if you're like me, I like a lot of crust. And you know what? Like I always say in your kitchen, you can do exactly what you want. So you can just pile as much crust on here as you would like. Okay. It's looking good. Go around the edges good. You know as this cooks, it's gonna expand. So you can keep that in mind. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put this in the oven. We're gonna let this cook about like it just says on the directions on your crescent rolls. But just keep a close eye on it because like we said, the insides is completely done. We're just, um, you know, mainly putting this back in the oven so that we can get this good and brown and, and done. So just keep an eye on it. When it's nice and golden brown, pull it out, and then I have a special treat that's going to go on top. We have our little skillets in the oven. So our pot pie is cooking away. And the surprise that I was telling you about to go on the top, totally optional. If you don't want to do this, just leave it off. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to fry two eggs and I'm going to put the eggs on top of our breakfast pot pies because we've got the sausage and the gravy and the onions and the potatoes, and but we need some eggs. So that's what I'm going to do here. Go ahead and fry these so they'll be ready when those pot pies come out of the oven. We'll be able to eat. Put a little salt and pepper on them. This is gonna be the perfect addition to our pot pies. Here is the moment that we've been waiting on. Our pies are ready. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Wow. Here's one. There's two. Okay. Turn the oven off. Now, for the treat that we're gonna put on top as if this was not enough. Okay. 
Now, for us, because we like the yellow runny, um, that's the icing on the cake right there. We're gonna go ahead and open that up and let all that goodness start running out of there. Let's, let's go one step further. Try to throw a little green on there. Some fresh chives. And this is breakfast pot pies for two. I know that you are just is so excited to make this in your own kitchen that you're going to subscribe to my blog if you haven't already done that. You can do that by going to cook it for two, cook it for two.com. Jump on there, subscribe to my blog, and when you do that, then you're gonna have access to all my recipes, to pictures, stories, videos, all kinds of goodness. You can download this recipe or you can print it off, but point is, you're gonna be able to fix it in your kitchen. Lord bless you.